Hey, hello, this is John Davis. I'm here. I'm uh, Davis Business Coaching, and I'm here with Melanie Latrell Grandois. And I met her a couple weeks ago, and I thought this would be, she'd be a good one to share her story with everyone. So I wanted to interview her, and she said, "Of course, why not?" So uh, Melanie, why don't you just you know introduce yourself and your company and what it is that you do? Okay, awesome. Yes, yeah, so my name is Melanie, and I am a brand designer and photographer. So um, I find that moms, working moms who've been in corporate want a transition out of corporate into business. So my main goal is to help them build their brand online. So building their brand visuals, like their logo, building their website for them, um, centered around their business purpose, serve the, their ideal client. And then also capturing brand photography that tells the story of their business and appeals to their clients. So um, just to give them a cohesive professional look so that they can show up as a credible expert online. Okay, very good. So somebody, they want to start a business and they have a functional area that they're an expert in, but they're not ready to to dive into being a marketing expert too. You, you feel yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. So okay. typically like the women like um, that that typically come to me, they they may have been in corporate for maybe a decade or so. And they're like, man, I really want to spend more time with my family. Um, I really want to start my own business. They have this dream or this passion and they don't really know they're not very technical or creative to create their own website. So then they look to me to help them strategize um, their brand identity, design their logo, their website, their photography to really put that creative technical spin on it. OK, very good. I uh, I was talking to someone the other day and I said, what's the one thing you uh, you've learned here uh, since you started your business? And uh, and he says, marketing's hard. <laughs> so, and he's right so you're helping in that in that regard yeah. so how long have you been in this space of of marketing of marketing brand, well, I mean, brand I have, development brand, brand creation. development yeah so i mean i did a good bit of marketing and branding in corporate so i mean it could date back 15 years in corporate plus the three years so about 19 years um but three years in business so three years of where i've been really focusing on developing brands websites and photography in my business. But before that, I was in corporate doing a user experience, web design, marketing communications, um, instructional design, like uh, training curriculums and things like that. So I took a lot of my expertise from corporate and what, and this took the pieces that I wanted to um, help with in my current business. The things you were best at and you enjoyed doing the most. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And which is what we should all be doing in life. We yes. should all be, our work should be what we're really good at and we really enjoy doing and exactly. get rid of all the other stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, still keep it in the back of your brain because sometimes I find I do need to like that stuff in corporate. It does come back and I use it, you know, it's still there. I mean, I oh, absolutely. It. Yeah. So it's good to have that knowledge tucked away. <laughs> my, my corporate uh, experience has been invaluable in my current yeah. career. Uh, it, and it helps me so much. And it's, it's interesting when I meet people who have never had that background because yeah. you, you talk about a certain thing and you're like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> I, uh, a good friend of mine I worked with 20 years ago, he's got a, uh, an owner who have a, of a large company. I mean, in many, many, many millions of dollars. And, and that, uh, that owner doesn't believe in strategic planning. Like, really? I, I don't understand how you do that. But yeah. <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Anyway, um, so you think how he survived. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, family business. Um, so you've mentioned several times that you talked about women. Mm -hmm. um, so my, you know, my next question is who is your best customer? Okay. And, you know, so clearly, you know, you're catering, you're targeting, that sounds bad, targeting women doesn't sound good, but you know, explain <laughs> who your best customer is. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I serve both men and women, right? So um, when I but when I look back at the trend of people who who required my services, I noticed a, a, a common denominator. I noticed that a lot of them were uh, moms. They were moms who were in corporate. They were moms who were tired of being in corporate. And they were moms who wanted to branch out, spend more time with their family and have their own business. So, um, I mean, I've served both men and women. Um, so my best customer is really that person. What I've found is someone who who has um, who is um, kind of been doing their gift for a while. Like they may not have like a official business, but they've been using their gifts for a while, and now they're ready to to really brand it and build it into a business and monetize it. Um, it they're that person that they're confident 
they're confident in that they're confident in their gifts. Like they know what they love to do and then, and they're committed to it, right? They're committed mm-hmm. to doing it. They're committed to the, the long-term vision of it. And they're ready to, to endure that, that long-term race. Cause you know, a branding investment website investment is one of those things where like you could do like a quick little website, you know, just to kind of trial and error. Um, but when you start investing in like branding and a custom website, it's, it's usually people that are like, sure that this is, this is the route that I'm ready to go. Um, I, like I said, I've done men, women, um, I've done my husband's, he's an inspirational speaker. Um, but it's really that person. It's really a mindset that ideal customer really has a particular mindset of they're, they're ready to go and they're confident in their, in their gifts. And they know that they've gotten results for people and maybe they currently have a website, but they're not showing up credible. So maybe the website is just like a template from GoDaddy or something, and it's not credible. It doesn't show everything they've done. So like I worked with one client, she's public relations, but she had like a template from GoDaddy. And if you looked at it, it had like a bunch of stock photos. You would never know that she did public relations for Oprah Winfrey. Like she right. did, yeah, but there was no on her website. Her website looked like 1980, you know? Mm-hmm. So my goal for her was we need to show your credibility. We need to show people that you get people results and put your best work out there. And so that's really um, the best customer that I can get that transformation for. Okay. Well, that's, it's what I liked about how you shared that is when I asked who your best customer is, the first answer was you look back at your current customers. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing we tell people, you say, well, well, who's your target audience? I don't know. We'll, we'll go look at who's your customers. And we call them A, B, C, and D clients, right? Mm-hmm. And your client is, is somebody that keeps coming back to you. And why do they keep coming back to you? Because you're serving them very well for some mm-hmm. reason, right? You connect exactly. with them better. Um, they, they refer you more often, you know, they, they pay on time. There's all sorts of criteria that could be your best customer. Um, so I like that you said that is you looked at who you've served. Um, and it's great. You can, and the thing is when we, when we niche down in something like that, it doesn't mean that we're not good in other areas. Exactly. As, as you've developed yourself as an expert in one area, people say, well, if she's an expert in this then she's really good in everything else, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. uh, so you can help other people uh, for sure. But what I really liked about it, and we learned about this in, in marketing is, you know, about the personas, right? Mm-hmm. And what people call it stereotyping. We can't stereotype anymore, <laughs> but marketing, right? If you can paint that picture, mm-hmm. I worked who could, like literally as he described his clients, we could figure out, like we could identify what kind of car they drove, mm-hmm. what type of, they were in the different things and that's the same thing because as you were doing that this is you and i have spoken a couple times already while you were describing somebody i literally wrote down a name of somebody that i'm like oh she's got to talk to this person nice that's so good yeah the picture and that's what exactly when you target when you identify that customer it helps you but it also helps everybody in your circle know who to bring to you Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I think that was really the transformational part in my business was really when I really understood, okay, who am I speaking to? Right. Cause when you speak to everyone, you speak to no one. It's like, so I had to go back and look, well, who has paid me to do stuff in the past and who have I got results for in the past? And so, um, once I really got that clear message of who I, you know, felt like could use my help the most and my, that ideal persona, like you said, then things started to really, I started to get clarity. And I think that's really important for a lot of business owners is really understanding, um, especially if you're like service-based one-on-one coach type thing, um, understanding that ideal persona is like key because then you know who to talk to, you know where to go, hang out, target, all that, all that stuff. So Absolutely. Absolutely. I knew you would get that with the marketing background for sure. <laughs> um, so, uh, so it's not an understatement to say the last couple of years have been a little weird. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just everything. And it's not just the COVID, but it's the reaction to the COVID, what's happened to the supply chain, what's happened to the economy, uh, staffing, career changes. I was just talking to somebody else about that. So based, how have the last few years impacted you in the business that you're in today? Yeah. So, so I, I left corporate 20, early 2019, like April, and then August, around August, July, 2019 about four months later it's like oh, hey you know I should start a media company I just called it a media company and then that kind of branched into branding web and photography um so I had booked like my first client that December 2019 and things were going like I I you know 
um, showcased them on LinkedIn. I got inquiries. I got another client. And then um, as I'm wrapping up a client, March 2020, I remember it, March 2020, the whole COVID, everything hit. And then I, it was just crickets from there. It was silent. It was silent. Like, I don't think I remember booking like a paid client. Like I did some like pro bono work, but like paid client that whole rest of from March, 2020 to the rest. I don't, yeah, no, it was so silent. And so really mm-hmm. discouraging um, because I'm seeing people online and they're like, this is my best year yet. Even though it's COVID, I have surpassed right. all my revenues. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? So it was really discouraging. Um, and then things started to pick up that following year, 2021, like around spring. Um, did you make any changes? Did you do anything different? Did I make any changes? Uh, you know what? I, I During that time, I was very consistent with blogging. I was very consistent with showing up on social media. I Even though I wasn't booking people, I still showed up for my business all the time. And I think that's really important to show up for your business, um, whether it be through email marketing, whatever marketing you, you, you want. But I think that was really key. I was blogging, you know, and educating people. Like that was my thing, educate people about their brand. So I, even though I wasn't booking paid clients, I was still showing up for my business. So I think those seeds that I sowed in that time, I was harvesting it like that following right. year. That's what I really think. Yeah. Like they weren't wasted. Well, that makes sense. I mean, there were, I mean, was it there were more businesses started in 2020 and 2021 than any other year, yeah. right? So I'm yeah. sure it was a little dip, right? And it was yeah. yeah. demand. People were ready to, people, want, you probably had six months of people ready to take a leap that didn't leap. And yeah. then they, and then there's a whole bunch of us who said, Ooh, we're all in. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I like that being consistent in what you're doing and your marketing and, and not giving in. Because uh, there are people who fell into a shell. Right. Never, never get out. Yeah. So. yeah. It's, it's easy to do. I mean, it's rough. It can be rough. <laughs> right. Um, are there any, any things that you did or didn't do any decisions you made that if it came up again, you would make those decisions differently? Like if you went back to April of 2020, what would you do different? Mm, you know, that's a good question. Um, I think I would, I, I could look back and see where I needed, I needed more faith in myself. You know, I was starting to, to doubt myself when I mm-hmm. saw that I wasn't booking. I think a mindset shift, right? Um, even though I was showing up for my business, because I was going by what I saw and not what I, the faith that I believed, I think that I was, I was doubting myself. I was doubting that I actually could do it, you know, month after month after month of silence. I, I needed more faith and I don't know like how I could have gotten that more faith, but um, I think community is so important though. Mm-hmm. Um, so something different probably, but I did have a small community um, which did help me to keep going. But I think surrounding yourself with other like entrepreneurs who are enthusiastic, who are driven, who are ready to go. It, it, it supercharges us. Right? Sure. Absolutely. So, yeah, feed off of it. Exactly. Yeah. So joining groups and masterminds and just really staying connected um, probably could have done that a little bit more. Um, and then like I had, um, I didn't really have like a coach coach, but I had someone that I knew was a coach. Um, sometimes I could see like where I was stubborn. Right. So like if the coach said this, I was like, oh, I don't think that's going to work. I wouldn't do it. So I'm like, you know, so I, I would do my own thing. And so I'm realizing where me doing my own thing hurt me. Like, like if you have someone who's a coach, who's a professional, listen to what they're telling you to do, do what they're telling you to do. They've done this before. So I think for me is not being so stubborn, right. And thinking that I knew it all, even though I was brand new, Mm -hmm. but really just taking advice from different coaches and not thinking that, uh, not doubting and not thinking that I knew better, if that makes sense. So really humbling myself and really um, saying, you know what, let me, let me, even if this feels uncomfortable of what this coach is telling me, let me just do it anyway. Right. Because obviously yeah. they've gotten results before. So I think a mindset shift, staying connected heavily in community and really listening and, um, and doing what different coaches that I would see online or talk to like doing it even if it felt weird yeah you know everything you said there made perfect sense but it's interesting as I, as I listen to it and I and I kind of paraphrase it back is part of it was 
staying true to yourself and being confident in yourself Mm -hmm. and that unwavering faith that you know that you're doing the right thing Mm -hmm. combined with listen to other people. (laughs) (laughs) people It's a real, because that's, that's really what an entrepreneur needs to do, right? You have to have this almost a blind faith. You can't be Mm -hmm. crazy, but you have to have that, that drive that know that this is going to succeed. And it's a lot easier to do it a couple of years after than when you're in it. Yeah, right. Exactly. But uh, that's but so that's one thing you learn as an entrepreneur that you, I got this. I'm going to do this. This mm-hmm. is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, it's tougher than I got this. But the other thing that I've learned in the last few years that you touched on is that community piece. Mm-hmm. Right? Many people believe when they're making that leap to be an entrepreneur that they're now going to work all by themselves. Yeah. Now, in April of 2020, a lot of people were. Mm hmm. But you, what I've learned is there's a huge community of entrepreneurs that supports one another. And there's a lot of, like, I almost feel like I have more friends and more peers now when I work on my own than when I worked in a company of 20,000 people. Nice. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Corporate can be like, you're surrounded by so many people, but you feel like alone. And so now as an entrepreneur, I have different masterminds and different people. And like, I feel like it's growing. The community is definitely growing so you could do it different you believe in yourself more and work with others more yeah believe in myself more and don't go into isolation don't think I have to carry that weight alone because if I'm going through it most likely someone else is going to it and going through it and we can exchange advice tips ideas even refer someone to help whatever it may be that connection is really vital okay so those let's pick on those two things or any other things that you you've done in the last few years are there any changes you've made to your business that are going to be a permanent part of your business and your, your life as an entrepreneur going forward? Um, interesting. Um, that's a great question. And, and how do you make it? Maybe, maybe that's another way. How do you take those lessons and make them a permanent part of you and your business? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, after I have been um, a part of different like coaching groups and masterminds, I feel like I need to be in at least one mastermind, you know, a month, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A good, a good community. I definitely like local. Um, but, oh yeah. So I'm in, I'm currently in Gwinnett and, um, hoping to build like a local community here in Gwinnett. Um, but I do have some, some groups like, you know, um, remote. Um, I I think that's why I think that is the one thing that I have to have and make that permanent in my business is, you know, either be a part of a local entrepreneurship group or um, a a monthly mastermind, um, something, coaching something that has, I think that has to be permanent. When I, when you asked me that question, that has to be permanent because whether I'm starting off, whether I'm seasoned, whether I've been doing this for a while, whatever stage I'm moving through, I'm going to need some type, I'm going to need new accountability, new right. tips. I'm going to whatever level I'm going to, I'm going to need something at that level. Right. And so being in community, I'm, I'll have access as I grow in. Yeah. That levels. makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and that reminds me, I didn't ask this question, the business that you do in your target audience, are they, are they just in this, you know, the Atlanta suburb, this Gwinnett County, is it Georgia? Is it, can you work with people nationwide, worldwide yeah. with, with, yeah, okay. I, work work with with people, I work with people nationwide, worldwide, local. Um, so if I'm working with someone remote, then, you know, I'll do their brand and web. And then like, you know, I had a woman um, who's um, in, in California. And so she, I created her photography guide. So even though I didn't do the photography, I created a guide for the photographer. Like this is her brand, her colors. This is the story we're telling. And so she could just pass that on to her photographer, get the shots they need. And then I can implement it into the website and then if someone's local of course i can take their photos for them here okay all right very good um and one other thing i was going to talk to you about it offline but i'll I'll share it here because there's a group i'm in that you may be interested in uh that i work with another coach and she's in she is in chicago okay and we have a we have a group of people and it's called mindset and marketing okay i mean it is (laughs) everything you just talked about like you would fit right in i don't know if i mentioned it before (laughs) Um, if I did, I apologize for repeating myself. No, I'll I don't fill think you, you did. More. That sounds great. It, it's, it's a great community. Um, 
Okay. So I mean, this, this is going to feel a little bit redundant, but what's been your biggest lesson since you've started your business? Um, my biggest lesson. So I think I just might have just learned it like a couple of days ago, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I think I might have just learned my lesson a couple of days ago, but there's so many lessons. Um, one, to never give up. That's I mean, that's to keep going, even when it looks messy um, mm -hmm. or doesn't look like there's it's nothing's happening. Because my thing is, you know, I was in corporate and although it was valuable, it's one of those seasons where I'm like, OK, the door is shut and I hope to keep that door shut. I want to you know, I like the freedom of time. I like the schedule. I like being able to spend time with my family. So that's another one of my motivations is keep going forward um, so that I can keep this this lifestyle that I've built through this business, if that makes sense, of, of yes, spending more time with my family. But I think my biggest lesson has been keeping the faith in myself um, and then keeping the faith in what um, God has called me to do mm -hmm. and then just keeping him in every aspect of my life and my business. So sometimes I'll just go off and make all these plans. I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and I'll just go run and do it. Right. So, you know, in my relationship with God, it's like, I'm learning to commit my works onto him and allow him to guide my path so that it's made straight. So I don't feel like I'm on this roller coaster. So really just seeking and saying, okay, should I be doing this? Should I not be doing this? Um, is this going to be like a dead end? Um, but really it's kind of sometimes staying still because in entrepreneurship, I can get like grind and just take on all these things. And I'm realizing, okay, if I can just stay still maybe for a little bit and just hone in and focus on going deep into this one area of my business, I'll get better results than scattering myself through many, yeah. many, 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 many different things. Right. Um, That's a great one. That's yeah, a great yeah, lesson. Yeah. Idea. So I, I definitely think I can see where I've scattered myself too much and I'm just, I'm like, Oh man, I've taken on too much. And now I'm ready to like release things off my plate, you know? Yeah. So um, at the end of the, at the end of those days, you're like, I have worked really hard and I don't know what I got done. Exactly. And then sometimes <laughs> you say, I'm taking this day and I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. Right. And, yep. but you get it done. Exactly. <laughs> and, so yeah, the narrow day, know exactly what you need. Be very intentional about what you're going to do that day. Exactly. Um, that's one thing I talk to people about, you know, writing daily goals. At the end of the day, what are you getting done tomorrow? First mm -hmm. thing in the morning, what are you going to get done? Exactly. And then, well, the other part at the end of the day is what did I get done? Did I get my, my big things done? Yeah. So, and really just like, I'm a checklist person. So really just checking that thing off, you know, it feels good to be able to say, this is done. I'm checking it off. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So are there any, is there any offers, opportunities, anything going on in your business that you want to make sure people know about? Um, so offers. So right now, I mean, on my website, so I have a free, um, a free guide to like 10 website mistakes that you don't want to make, like okay. the most common website mistakes. Um, so it's a guide. So it's a, it's a, um, 10 mistakes you, you want to make sure you're not making on your website. And then at the end, there's like an action item plan. So you can go okay. in and say, okay, this is a thing. What right? What are the action items I'm going to do to correct this mistake? Right. Um, so that's free on my website. Um, and so currently, too, I'm I'm off offering brand strategy. What is your website? Oh What's yes, website? my website is uh, my first name Melanie M E L A N I E, and then my middle name L A T R E L L E dot com. So Melanie Latrell dot com, and that free guide I'm talking about is at the very bottom of that page. You know, I haven't done this before, but we're we're gonna wing it. <laughs> what could go wrong? Uh, yeah. Are you seeing the page? I am. Yep. So at the very bottom. Yep. Ten. Okay. Yeah. So there's Excellent. um yeah so and it's really helpful for people who are maybe just getting started and they're like hey you know what I. I'm not really ready to make the full investment, but, but maybe there's some tips you can give me to help me understand and get started in, um, building my website. And then maybe there's things that, especially for those DIYers who are like, I just want to know what I need to fix and they can just go in and fix it. Um, but for those people who want like creative technical expertise, I offer brand strategy sessions where we really look at you know, your business to help develop your logo, your website, um, website strategy. We, we 
use color psychology. So whatever the business goals is, we use certain colors because there's certain emotions we want people to feel when they see and experience your brand. Um, oh, that's so, interesting. Yeah. I haven't heard about that. I, yeah. I like to hear about that. It's that's... really cool. Like when you look at all the businesses out there, you can see why they use the certain colors they use. Like once you understand the psychology behind it. Um, so, so doing that and then understanding their website. So like the website's the last thing because we want to understand the business and get clear on the message, get clarity on their message. So we can clarify it to people that visit the website. Um, so the website, we do strategy, like navigation, who are all the different users who's coming and where do we want to direct them? What's the end goal? The end goal is to convert leads into buyers. And how do we do that through the navigation on your website? And then of course the photography. So with the number one thing I will tell people with photography, you want to be able to have photos where someone could just look at the photo and know, know what you do. Right. Right. So, so if someone's a mechanic, right. So you would want pictures of them in action working on a car. So if they never read any text, if they never read a paragraph, they could look at the photo and say, Oh, they're a mechanic, they're a doctor, they're Arthur. Um, because you know, the way we scroll websites now is headlines and photos, you know? So it's, right. you have like a few seconds. So when you're taking photos, you want to make sure they're action photos that someone can look and say, oh, they're this. I know what their business is from that photo. So, And then piecing all that together and then showing up as an expert and booking clients. That's that. I like that. I like that because I hadn't, we hadn't talked about color much. I haven't talked about it with much. But I know that for us, well, first of all, I understand some of the, some of the colors. Like you see a lot of restaurants are red and certain mm -hmm. beverages and different things like that. Um, one of the things I was told going into my world is for selling the recommendation was to often wear blue for trust <laughs> is that what that is yeah so blue you'll see a lot of banks use blue because mm -hmm. it's a feeling of trust peace calmness so it's that initial like you know like when you look at the sky you just get like this it just kind of calms you so things like the financial industry and sales and corporate they use blue because they want to establish that that trust trust yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I never knew why yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, what's, uh, what's most inspiring for you right now as a business owner? Most, what, what... most inspiring is connecting with women. Um, I really want to tell women stories, like women who typically may not be in the spotlight. I want to spotlight them. I want to show what they're doing in the world to for good because a lot of people I work with they use their gifts for good. You know, um, I've worked with a memoirs mentor. She helped people write their stories to leave a legacy for their family. So and spotlighting their journey and their story and just really um, allowing others to see it's possible to, 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 to be in purpose and use your gifts um, in a positive way. You know, that's really inspiring just to connect with dip different people and see what they're doing and spotlight them. Kind of just how you're spotlighting me today and, okay. and um, telling other stories. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> all right. So, I, and I love doing this. That's part of why I do it. It, it. it brings it to life. You're talking about pictures. This is going to show in life what, what we do. Exactly. Um, so, uh, Melly, I want to thank you for your time. I'm looking forward to seeing how your how your company grows over time because we're you. we're practically neighbors. Yeah. Um, and uh, and you know, we'll be be sure to stay in touch as as we build our businesses together. Sound All good? Right. Yeah, that sounds great. Right. I appreciate your time, John. No, thank you, Melanie. All right.